Welcome back to the Four Wheel Drive Podcast, driven by Shelter. That is Southern Riverband Let It Ride, which we are learning to love, and the Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram. All our episodes over on Backchat to YouTube. Ronnie, we're back in the studio, mate, after a jam-packed Sydney four-wheel drive show. How, how have you recovered? Mate, I'm oh, still recovering. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's good to be back in Perth. I uh, left the troopy over there. Yep. And that was a big show. How'd you go leaving your baby uh, in the hands of some Sydney siders? Oh, not too bad. Like Last time I left my 79 there with the same guy. So Daniel's looking after, hopefully, Daniel, you're looking after my car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little shout out to Daniel, uh, look after the new girl. Because we, we unpacked over there that that's probably your your favourite, your choice at the oh, moment. You were, you were well, really hesitant. Well, you like on, you are now. On, hang on, hang you on. hesitant, <laughs> but you were, you were pretty keen on it. I'm pretty keen on it, but look, the 79, love driving that. Yeah, and it's good ster- to see that back out, out on the street. Yes. Yeah, it needs a wash and uh, yeah, it needs a bit of TLC, but um, I've got two speakers out on the driver's side. I don't know why. I think maybe, I don't know, dust, moisture. Yep. So the, the stereo is a bit... Right. Not, yeah. Probably just means you've been having a bit too much fun in it, mate. Um, let's recap the show a little bit. Talk us through how it was for you, your experience, because... One thing that Jaden and I noticed that we didn't know, so we obviously, you know, we we watched you growing up and all this sort of stuff, but we didn't realise the celebrity status that you actually oh. hold amongst the four wheel drive <laughs> community because you're a busy, busy man over there. It's it's pretty busy, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's great because you get to meet all the people that um, the whole reason why the channel's going so well, you know, it's yep. so it's it's great to catch up with all these people. But I mean, <laughs> I don't know why I said but. It does get pretty tiring after a while. Like yeah, it's a no big doubt. day. Yep. I like to stick around all day and just just chat to people. Yep. Um, whereas you know I understand like some of the other guys they sort of they're there for a period of time and then they're out of there. Yep. And I kind of get it because it it does tax you. But I kind of like I'm going to the show these next three days. I am going to get talked to by yep. a lot of people, so that's what it is. Yeah, well, you gave everyone your, your full attention, and it was, mate, we, we almost had to set up a, a timetable for you, <laughs> um, put in the chat slot, podcast slot, um, toilet stop. Yeah, it toilet, was, yes. It was very full on for you. We, we sort of, we were doing coffee and food runs for you. You literally could not escape the back of the troopy there for a while, so it was, um, I felt yeah. for you there, but. Uh, what was the thoughts on the troopy from the people that were like a lot of people came past and because Jade and I were a little bit less busy than you, we'd we'd be sitting out and we could hear what the crowd was saying. But I was a few people that recognise you, Dougo. Uh, there was a couple. They recognised the voice. Yeah. Um, there, was a, one, there was actually one bloke. <laughs> so you made to be nice. But uh, what what were the thoughts on the troopy from from the people coming by? Mate, um, yeah, they, they loved it. They mainly asked me questions about um, what I actually thought of the stuff that's, that's attached to it because yep. a lot of people, um, they kind of assume because there's a lot of other shows out there, you know, they understand that there's, there's sponsors and things like yep. that. Yep. Um, but the, the thing with my vehicles, I only put on there what I actually want on there. If, it's, if it doesn't stay on there, it means it's failed or I found something better or it didn't suit my needs. So um, they just love getting the honest feedback because I always tell people the pros and cons. Yep. You always got to say the cons. Now, some businesses don't like that, but... It's how you get credibility to talk about what you've built and yes. all that. So I'm quite proud of the build and it was great getting all the questions. So, um, you know, and, and most of the time it's people, they're either tossing up between this brand or something else they've seen. Yep. And then usually they'll come ask me some questions and then by, you know, later, later during the day, I'll come back and they'll actually give me feedback and say, yeah, thanks for that because I've now made my decision. I couldn't make up my mind and yep. yeah, so... Yep. In that sense, it's it's just quite rewarding as well. Like people are going, "Wow, look, look at this!" And yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the ones that stood out to me, there was a family of four at one stage there who were looking at the the troopy because of the four seat conversion oh. and and the pop up roof, obviously. Um, so they were really keen. So there's a few families floating through. I could see, you know, young kids and mum and dad come by and they had a good look in and. Because that was quite, it's quite a unique setup, to be honest. Like even yeah, with the uh, four seats, with yeah. the four seats, it is mm. definitely so. It's pretty cool to see people were, were sort of um, one mind blown to meet you, but two to actually see what they see on your YouTube channel in the in the vehicle as well. It was almost um, it was cool to see the, uh, yeah. the joy on people's faces when they, they came by. They, they come to see, and usually the words are, "Jeez, it's much bigger in in, in the real world." Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, with the roof up, mate, it does it towers over you. Oh, it does. And luckily yeah. we had that awning out too because uh, first day was. 
It was pretty wet. It, it was a um, it was a sizzling day that one. So one of those families just reminded me of one of them. Normally, I get the bloke who wants this, he wants that, right? And then he's trying to talk his missus into it. It was flipped on this yeah, one. Yeah, right. Yeah, the lady, she wanted this, she wanted that. She was trying to convince her husband about roof conversion. And, and, <laughs> I love and that. I was explaining how roof conversion for me and the missus and then we got the double swag for the two girls. Yep. And she's like, yeah, see, it can work. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> I like to hear that. Uh, and there was actually, there's some other content creators there. Yes. Um, so, we were, in, we were set up in that area, but um, on the on the, the women front, um, Matt and Bridget, Holly, Matt and Holly oh, yeah, Bridget, Bridget from Red Dirt Diary was there, yes. um, sat down for a little bit at the live show, which was cool. Um, but she mentioned that as well, women getting into four-wheel driving, that yeah. there wasn't much for her in that space um, going into it. So, that's why she sort of started her own thing and, um, yeah, going great guns um, with what she's doing as well. So, that's cool to see. Then yeah, cool definitely. It's, the, good, it's good to see more more women come into it. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's, it sort of just, you know, tells them that, you know, you can go and do yep. it, you know. And you can try and convince your husband to to get a troopy conversion. So, oh, I like it. Yeah. There's a lot of women out there who can't get their, um, you know, their partner out there to go camping, yeah. which is really surprising, you know. Yeah. And look, to reflect on that, um, I wasn't too keen on camping to begin with either, but it was actually my missus that got me there out go. there yep. in the Falcon, you know, like we took the Falcon down all kinds of weird roads and went fishing 24 hours, caught nothing. And um, she got me pretty much into more of the camping side. Oh, I right. always travel, but yep. she got me into the camping there side. There you go. Things. That's good to hear. Um, quickly as well, because this, this episode is about recovery. We'll get to that. Um, yes. Because we've got some interesting stuff to have a look at, but uh, – just want to let everyone know. So we've got Tony. From, we've got guest interviews coming up yeah. um, so that we actually were able to do at the Sydney sh- uh, Sydney show. So we've got Tony from GME. That was a corker. Matt and Holly from the Overland Travellers, and Jamie the Australian Bushman. Yeah, which um, we hope the audio is hope, good. Yes, that's right. We had to let everyone know that a lot of vehicles revving in the background. It was it going was, mad at the time. It was Saturday. That it was one, late right? Saturday Arvo, and the comp yeah. trucks were going bananas. Oh mate, that was just. That was on the limiter. Yeah, it was it was actually good to watch, but geez, it, yeah, the ears were ringing by the end of it. Um, so hopefully that comes good. But we, yeah, they're quality episodes, so I yeah. encourage everyone to go over and have a look at those when they do come out because um, it's a bit of a different spin. You see these guys on TV and YouTube and all of this, but um, so dive sit into down little, and really yeah, talk to them. dive into their story a little bit and how they yeah. got into it and and see what makes them tick. Yeah, that's what yep. I love most is like seeing what actually got them into it, what makes them tick and. Yep. You know, and some of the stories, Jamie, you know, like... Yeah, he well, could have gone. I hope it does come come up because I oh, could have gone for hours with Jamie. Yeah. He was um. Oh, look, we'll, we'll have him on again and like regardless yeah. if it works or not, this yeah. one, we'll have him on again yeah, multiple part, times. Part two, three, four, five. But yeah, really good people and uh, we appreciate him giving, that, giving us their time over there. Um, all right, we've covered the four-wheel drive show. So let's get into what we're actually here to talk about. And I want to throw to you first because we're going to show everyone or yes. you can listen to it. We're going to show them a video, but quickly... Quickly give us a little brief on what we're going to see in terms sure. of recovery here. So, look, uh, it's a four-minute video. The way uh, my guys have cut it is in a way so you can kind of hear the action of what's happening. So, hopefully, it's descriptive enough for you. But I'll yep. give you a brief on it. But highly recommend you go and check out the YouTube version of this podcast because it has a four-minute segment of this actual recovery, yep. which we're going to talk about. So, <clears throat> it all started with we were starting a trip towards uh, Israelite Bay, you know, the... Uh, Far south, yes, east of <laughs> Western really, Australia. I'm gonna get a sticker made up of that or something. Oh mate, whatever, yeah. you, whatever you said <laughs> that first time, that needs to be the one, <laughs> mate. So complicated, I can't even think of it now. <laughs> you end up at the Baxter Cliffs, though. Is what? Yes, is what we're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere down there. Yeah. <laughs> so we in Esperance, we waited until this track opened up, and we thought we had to go around a long way to start it from reverse, so it had time to dry up. Turns out the next day they opened the track. We're like, okay, we'll wait one more day. So the next day, after the track had already been opened, we headed out towards Israelite Bay and we're about to start filming. We're at the air down point. As we pull up to the air down point, there's two guys sitting there and they could barely get up. They could barely stand. Yep. And then it occurred to me, hang on, there's no bus stop out here. No one should be here unless there's something going yep. on. That's not right. So I got out. Turns out that these guys have flipped their Ford Everest over and they walked about 40 k's although in this video i'm saying 70 k's that's before we actually gauge exactly how far so yep. 40 kilometers overnight they walked cold conditions they're lucky it was cold conditions because had it been hot it could have ended yeah. badly yep so we fed them we gave them water we hung around until some uh, family members came to pick them up and once they were safe and sound off off they went we drove in and discovered some things on the way in 
And then we got to the Everest and we had to flip it back onto its wheels and then tow it up to the top. Now, we had to get a bit creative with how we did this because the it was on like it was halfway down a hill on its side. So we had to secure it and then winch underneath to pull it back onto its wheels and then hop in it to release the um because it's an automatic we had to release the gearbox so we could actually pull it back and then slowly drag it up the hill and then push it off to the side so it was there ready to be collected by you know the people that lost their you know they flipped the vehicle um during that time we had to get really creative with a set of max tracks because the vehicle were kind of sliding towards the bank and it was it was going to do more damage to the panels so what we did was we put a put a max tracks down put some pegs in to hold it and that was just enough to slide the vehicle into it and then tip it up and we had the vehicle nice and secure with, yep. with minimal damage so the guys were happy we gave them a phone call at the end told them everything hid the key in the vehicle and i think we'll go to the audio file now yeah we'll have a look it is about four minutes like you said so we highly recommend that you get over to the youtube channel on Backchat uh, studios to to see this it'll work a lot better for you but um the audio you'll be able to put the picture together so let's take a look we've come across two gentlemen who've had a bit of an accident on the track itself they've rolled the vehicle they've walked 70 kilometers to get here overnight we've just given them some food and some water we've spoken to them started going down bellied out on the Bash plates just slid down. We're going to drive in and attempt to put their Ford Everest back on its yep, wheels. Keep it coming. If I wasn't feeling nervous in this track, I am now, eh? <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I'm actually feeling a little bit slightly nervous too, to be honest. Ooh. Hey, guys. I think that's his jacket. Oh, he's left drinks and food and it just goes to show that when you walk that far, you just end up spent that even the light items like a box of food and a couple of soft drinks, it just becomes too heavy. We'll pick these up and we'll take them to the vehicle. These puddles just keep coming. You lead, we follow. Ooh, I feel like there's a rush on to get to this car because it is 3.25. You don't have long. Wow. Oh, wow. Jeez. All this gear spread out here. I can't imagine what these guys they went through trying to take all this stuff out from the car and get themselves out to go and get help. You can see it's just a slow tip over when that wheel went up the bank. We would have lost control of the back, try to correct it. It's gone up the bank and then tipped it over. Windscreen's intact, no airbags are gone. That mirror is still on the vehicle. None of those windows are smashed. We've got a fair bit of work to do, so let's get cracking. My initial thoughts are my troopy down here, anchoring to the back. I reckon this is where I'll park it. Trav 79, up in that bank, using the same anchor point. Hold it. Hook it all up, check it all works, go from there. Hey, Sean, winch. Send it through. Let's go a little bit and see what happens. Copy. Bit more. Okay, stop. I can just hear the panels, that's all. Yeah, um, option B, hey? Improvising. This should stop it from sliding, but also allow it to collapse this once it tries to stand up. Sean, take a little bit of tension. That's it. Trav, start winching. We we'll do some work. Keep going, 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 keep going. Keep going. Okay, just, yep, little pops. More pops. That looks really good. More pops. Stand by. Stand by. It's on the max tracks now. Yep. Yep, get it coming. Get it coming. Get it coming. Stop. Stop. Release. Release. Okay. Up and over. I'm going to have to hop in the vehicle to take it out of park and put it into neutral. Mate, the angle on this is hectic. I reckon it's on a 45. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to put the strap around the steering wheel so I can step back. Alright, Sean, let's just do a test couple of inches. Hold up, stop, 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 stop. We thought we had the easy bit done, but it is chewing into the night. 
Okay, stop, 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 stop. Bouncing seems to work, so give it a few bounces. A few more. It's looking pretty good now. Getting there. Am I all clear to reverse? Reversing. Twin lock pulling you up. This whole alarm for me. Yep. Alright, right, so we're gonna push this into its resting place. The brakes are working. Woohoo! <laughs> that was a good team effort, eh? Oh yeah. Oh, feels good, eh? Well, that was our good deed done for the day. I spoke to the lads, they are absolutely stoked. Now we can continue our way to Israelite Bay. Hopefully we make it there. In darkness we find camp. Thanks for watching, we'll see you guys next week. Mate, that's an amazing, amazing clip. Um, it's just it's just incredible to see a car actually on its side in that position. Like, you just, yeah, it's, like, it's not something you every day. You just got to laugh at it when, when you actually see it, but... Great that it ended up okay, but I, I think mate, the golden rule yeah. about not leaving your car. Like, can you touch on that and when the yeah, actual sure. maybe when the when the time is right to leave your car? Like, oh, okay, that's, so, so that's like, a sticky one. Okay. Yeah, because that's what all you hear about. You don't you hear just don't leave your car, whatever yeah. happens. But how have you not come along? Or if you're a tiny bit more remote than even maybe what that is, and it is you know time yeah. and time that you don't find any, or see anyone comes past like what do you do mate that's a that's a, that's Sorry, a, that's a good worms, question <laughs> oh no yeah well let's let's get into it um look yeah the golden rule is don't leave your vehicle yeah as you just mentioned and these guys did leave the vehicle um i don't think it was so much of a rash decision although that would have been not feeling great about yeah. what was happening and it wasn't a fast impact thing there was no speed involved so yeah. i don't think too much of a head injury or anything was involved. I mean, I know that was sore. Yeah, okay. However, they tried to flip the car over themselves. So, yeah, how so did the time there? The technique that they used. Yeah, it was an interesting technique. So, yeah. where we winched it over from the chassis, we used the exact same point that they tried. Yep. So, we, we just had more technology to be able to flip it over where they had to go by hand. Yeah. So, they had a green strap wrapped around the chassis. Imagine a vehicle laying on its side, roof away from them, chassis facing them. They put a strap around that and then there's two tracks. So they were on the left track, they went to the right track and they uh, shoved some max tracks into the ground and up against the bank and created a bit of a solid thing yep. uh, like, a, like an anchor. Yep. They then had the strap going from the chassis to that and then they had a um, one of those PVC pipes you put your fishing rod into but they used a shovel through that to twist it. So as they're twisting, you can imagine that it's creating tension and it's starting to pull. Yep. So it started to pull the vehicle, but then it slid and then it did more damage to the vehicle. Okay. That's why they gave up because they couldn't do it. Yeah, yep. Um, and that's where the Max Tracks came in handy because when we got there, we already got a bit of a brief from them. So I don't know how I came up with it. It just came up. Yep. And I just thought, stuff it, let's whack these down here. And it turned out to work. Yeah, how treat. That, they were... That's... um. Oh. Four max tracks. That's some good vision because oh yeah, it's, know, it's yeah. some incredible pressure under those uh, under those boards. But it, it yeah. held up and yeah, obviously like pivotal in being <laughs> all the ten pegs went. But yeah, yeah. yeah well, you would have expect, I would have expected the max tracks to go. To be honest, but oh mate, I'll put those. Yeah, I'll put max tracks through situations you wouldn't believe. And, yeah, and mate, they're they're pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was their first? Um, so obviously the golden rule: don't leave the car. But they have. And they have. Um, they've obviously dumped their whatever yeah. they had on them. Basically, they, they started. It got heavy. They've started stripping off, yeah. Yeah, and look, even though it was cold and it, and, and it would have been like, the nights were freezing, they were saying that too. Yeah. During the day, I mean, they're, they're getting really hot as well. And the thing is, they're running out of water. So, actually drinking out of puddles. They threw their Oof. soft drinks all in one pile. Uh, even a little bit of whiskey they brought with them. Um, they obviously realized pretty quick that, hey, this is actually serious. It's a long walk. So, they were drinking water from puddles, which right. when we caught up with them, we, we gave... We, Emptied the bottles and gave them fresh water. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but they're alive and well today. So, yep. just in case anyone's wondering. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> That's good news. Uh, How's was, the car? The car, well, I still got to follow up with them about the car. But yep. I, I, be, I know they got the car back, but I'm not sure if it was a write-off or not. I mean, right. it, it was just panel damage and doors. So, hopefully, it's not Maybe, a write-off. Yeah. So, who knows? But, I mean, the main thing is they're alive and well. And they got all their possessions back that were in the car as well. Because there was fridges batteries all that kind yep. of stuff as well 
So one thing they, they did do right was they, they stuck together and they left footprints on the track. Yep. But when do you not leave your car? Uh, I mean, when do you leave your car? Is there ever a situation? Oh, yeah. I asked that ages ago, but thank you for coming back to that. <sighs> yeah. I, was, I could have avoided that <laughs> yeah, one then. Yeah, you could have. So I forgot about it. This is a sticky one. Look, um, many people in the outback have actually perished because they left their vehicle. And um, rescue teams have always found the vehicle because that's what they find first. The yeah. vehicle is easiest to find. That's why they say, st- st- statistically speaking, stay with your vehicle. I'm sure there could be like a small percentage of when you should have left your car. But I reckon it's so minor. You, it, you know, if you're going to hedge your bets, you stay with the vehicle. Yep. Right some, some people have just walked off in, into the bush. We walk off into the bush, no one's going to find you. Yeah. So if you are going to walk off, you're going to have to stick to the track. Leave footprints. Yep. Leave a, put like an arrow down with wood or something so people know where you went. But I would stress stay with the vehicle. And in this situation, they had supplies. They had a working fridge on a battery, which they pulled out. Yep. So... They could have spent, they could have probably hopefully stayed there for some time, you know? Yep. And and the water that they used to get out of there, they wouldn't have used that much because they wouldn't have exerted themselves under all that physical stress yeah, yep. by walking 40 kilometers. Yep. I mean, I don't know too many people that can walk 40 kilometers um, without having sore feet and yeah, complaining yeah, about it's, it. Yeah, it's a massive stretch, yeah. Yeah. So if you, say you hadn't come along and, or say, say I came along, Got a winch, um, got enough recovery gear to get anyone out of a standard situation. But this isn't a standard situation. So no. had it not been you and and um, and, and the other guys, Trav and uh, Sean, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah, so, and yeah. Sean. Um, what, what, what? Is there any chance of me recovering them yeah. with what I had? So two, you, two max tracks and a winch. Two max tracks and a winch. Okay. First thing you need to do is you need to form some kind of anchor behind the vehicle, so when it flips up, it's not going to roll away from you. Yeah, okay. So that green strap that was there, you could have possibly have used that somewhere. Yep. Um, then you would have had to position your vehicle where Travis' vehicle was, which was perpendicular. Um, well, I mean, across, yeah, sorry, across from it. Yep. Uh, to pull it over. Uh, but then you're by yourself still, right? So you got to operate that and then you got to get in the car, you got to steer it. There's a lot you got to do. I yep. know you can get winches with remotes, but that operation on your own. I just wouldn't even recommend it. Yeah, okay. You, you, you need more. You need multiple people to keep an eye on things. And then if something did happen to yourself while you're doing it, um, no one's there to help you either. Yep. And then you just end up being another casualty. You know. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. It's it's a complicated thing when a car's on the side, unless you really know what you're doing. Because the thing is, we did risk as well. You know, because had we damaged the vehicle more. The insurance company could have easily gone, oh, well, they, they took responsibility they, yeah. and they actually did more damage. Yep. So, you know, that could have happened yep. as well. So, we definitely got to address that as well. Yep. And we got permission from them and I had a conversation with them. Look, um, we're going to do everything we can to not damage your vehicle further, um, but I can't guarantee that there won't be something that, yeah. you know. But for us, nothing happened. Yep. So, Which is a good result. So, that's a recovery, a recovery gone well. Yes. We've got another short clip here of a recovery gone bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe give, uh, for those that can't watch again on <laughs> right, on uh, yeah. YouTube, maybe just yeah. for the listeners, just give it a little All right. <laughs> a little uh, <laughs> intro uh, into this one. Yeah, so in front of my mate's 105 series, yep. Land Cruiser. It's a nice looking rig, actually. Rafa's rig, that's his old rig. He's got a troopy now. In front of him is his mate. He's got a dual cab ute. Yep. Now, he, Raph is completely stuck. He's, he's bogged and the suction has kept him down. So, they've got a snatch strap and they're on a rate of recovery point and they're about to snatch it. Yep. Let's have a quick look for those watching. Yeah. All right. So, so we're, he's, we're he's, he's about to take off. Bogged down pretty bad. Ooh, yeah, he's sunk in, eh? And so, I think the... F- yeah, there it goes. Bang, like a bullet. Whoa. So, that has flown off. So, what's happened now is the 105 series has not budged. The dual cab has gone forward by, what do you reckon, 10 meters? Yeah. Maybe yep. that? Yep. Now, the snatch strap has gone off with such force, it's gone through the number plate, through the tray, into the water tank, and <laughs> not like, like, like proper into it. It's yeah, yeah. inside the water tank. It's obliterated the, the tank. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. completely messed that vehicle up. Now, the recovery point was rated. 
and it came off. So, so it's ripped the whole recovery point yeah, off. The whole oh. recovery point is gone. And it's not the factory. Oh, tighter. sorry. No, of course the D shackle wouldn't break anyway. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. They'll just go through. So the um, it's an, it's an actual point that he went to a full drive shop and he paid for it. He paid for them to fit it. And what I didn't do was they didn't use the bolts that come with it. They didn't use the high tensile bolts that come with that recovery point. All I did was they put the existing bolts, factory bolts back in, okay. which of course are not long enough now because yep. that recovery point is like 12 mil thick. It's like a big bastard. And the bolts were still in the recovery point inside the water tank. So yep. they retrieved it. They obviously had to cut the water tank open, get it out. Those bolts were only sticking out like i reckon you said like 10 mil or something yeah okay so it wasn't actually sitting in there properly yeah right and i think the the one thing so i'm not an expert but for me this is this is too for how stuck rafa is there he's really stuck um this hilux has had too far a run up if that is a hilux too far a run up to, so the point where the tension is just way too much um, at the point or is that is that okay no that that's okay is it really because yeah. that just looks like it's too aggressive no, that's that's okay. It's okay. Just, um, so it's purely the point, the recovery point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's purely the the recovery point. But they also didn't realize how stuck he was. So normally in this situation, it would just go. But <sighs> oh, that's the incredible. The momentum is there. Yeah. I mean that that stuff can kill you. You know. Yeah. Real easy. Well, that just goes to prove that I am no expert because <laughs> I had that <laughs> wrong too. But yeah. that um yeah, so that's one gone wrong. Yeah. So that's I'll, yeah. So I'll any s- any advice is go to a make sure that's oh, properly look, done it's, it's yeah it's it's one of those things you just can't you can't yeah you, you can't prepare for that so it doesn't matter how good your gear is yeah. it doesn't matter how safe you think it is it may not be safe yeah because because that it's everyone would think correctly. that's safe like yep. i would have been there maybe i would have recovered him like yep. that even a winch like the yeah. winch would have put so much pressure and if it was a cable wow yeah okay, when the cables go and cables hold tension yep um rope not not so bad but that's still gonna fly you know yeah that's scary stuff seeing seeing one like that um yeah so that's yeah that is a that's a recovery gone wrong now we're gonna we're gonna throw up some photos here (laughs) that we'll try and talk those (laughs) listening through there's a bit of a visual today so do try and get across to back chat uh studios for the um for the clips and the photos but uh, talk us through is this do you know about this yeah so the photo we're looking at now um Oh, I can't see. Is that a troopy or is that a... Yeah, it's a troopy. It's a yeah, troopy, yeah. yeah. You don't so, have your glasses on, eh? Oh, mate. A, a troopy is in a sad situation <laughs> here. So um, It is in a very sad situation. Yeah. That's why, mate, Jono, he sent this in. So, this, I think this is, might be Palm Creek or something. Yep. Uh, so, he's gone to do a water crossing and what's happened is he's gotten stuck. I think that he's just sunk in the sand. Okay. And we got a bonnet open on a troopy and it is not going anywhere. Yep. So, in that situation, I believe he pulled him back. And then they had to pull everything apart and then try and get this troopy going. Again. Yeah, right. So um, I think it ended up being a tow job out of there. That that was done. Yeah, oh, done. Yeah, done. Pop, dusted car gone. Hydro locked. Gee whiz. Hydro locked. Yeah. So what happens if you get stuck in water and then the water goes through the airbox? Uh, it will enter through the engine. Yep. And the water gets in. The water doesn't compress at all. Um, so with diesel and petrol, I mean there there is compression happening there as well, but. The, the engine set up for that, that compression. Right. When water enters, there's no compression, but the piston's still going to try and go up and then it would just bend the rod and it would seize the engine. Uh, okay. And yeah, and that's... Is that done through just being in there for a, an amount of time? Like yes. if you're in there for... Because obviously people go over river crossings deep like yeah. that all the time, but... I mean, this... See, this could also happen if you stall, right? And yep. then the water goes up the exhaust pipe and then enters that way too. Oh, so there's okay. two ways the water yep. can get in. Right. Um, and in this case, he'd taken water on board. I mean, the airbox is on the opposite side, but um, it might have happened as he went in and then yep. he just ended up there. So that's just unlucky really to end up there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, this, if it's the crossing I'm thinking of, um, it's a really tricky crossing. So most crossings, you would just go one at a time. Yep. You see the car in front and go, oh, wicked, I'm going to go now. Yep. The problem is with this crossing, you've got to wait. You've got to wait for it. Uh, it might be Nolan's, or maybe actually, one of those crossings in Cape York. Yep. You, one car goes over, you've got to wait for the, for the soil to settle. It's oh, like this okay. real loose sand. Yep. Once the water gets into it, um, it sinks the next vehicle. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a vehicle after it that's in danger. So it might have been the timing of... Yeah, well, through. I'm just not even knowing because yep. Yep. I've never heard of that before myself. Yeah. Like stirring it up. Normally, when that happens, it's someone's just spinning wheels too much, yep. you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like you in a bit of a. Yeah. So there's a lot. Yeah. In a bit of a strife here. This is Bremer Bay. 
Oh, yeah. Yep. So, so down there. the sand dune is slowly engulfing this track. So one side, we've got a sand dune coming in. The other side, we've got trees. Yep. And here I am stuck in the middle. <laughs> parked, parked on a bit of both. Yeah, parked on a bit of both, unfortunately. So a bit of damage to the tray and the body there. Yep. Um, and the only way to get out of that was a lot of digging. Right, okay. So a lot of digging because that's so sand what side you dig? We dug out on the high on side. On the high side yeah, to bring yeah. it down level, the car yep. level. Okay. We try and level it as much as we can. But on the uh, low side, there's a bit of a bank there and we put max tracks all the way along the edge. Yep. And you, you can kind of imagine like if you put a wheel against a sandy bank, yep. the wheel's going to slide in. You put a max tracks across it or a plank, it's going to spread the load. Yep. And that enabled us to actually drive through yep. so on the first vehicle behind that is torbs in, in his 79 and then we had the prado come through after yeah okay so each vehicle got easier but each yep. vehicle almost ended up in the same situation yeah right so passenger side to the trees yeah dug down on the driver side yeah, and that yeah. Was the, yep, that's it built a new track yeah and and that track is now gone the yep. the june's taken it oh really yeah yeah right. it's just every year move the cross just, and yeah last time we were there we had to find another way down and where are you in this next one? So you're again leading Ooh. the passenger side in, mate. Well, oh, yeah, mate. Just looking after All yourself right. or what are you doing? <laughs> mate, I don't... <laughs> see, this is why, like, when I, I was asking... Oh, we were, I knew we were, having, we were talking about recovery, so I got all these photos. And uh, I think the man behind the, behind the scene here... He's using all my photos yeah. of me. <laughs> anyway, hopefully there's some other photos coming up that aren't me. But right now, I'm in Lithgow. I'm climbing Mount Walker. Mount Walker's pretty hectic. Now... Uh, mate of mine over there, Aussie Four Wheelers, his name is Musa. I was uh, following him on this trip. Yep. Now, he's got a patrol on 40-inch tyres, these ones. Yeah, right. Okay. Those, right? The tractor so, tyres. The, the tractor tyres. Beat locks, he's down to like 5 PSI. He's climbing everything. Yeah. So, here I am in my Land Cruiser with a... Oh, no. What are you doing? <laughs> in, <laughs> with, just throw that in there. <laughs> with 35-inch tyres. You have to, to get on YouTube now to see mate, what Jade's just put up. Where did you get that from? Where did you even get that? We did, a, we did a guest video with this guy, actually, uh, in Sydney. We found him on the streets and <laughs> we thought we'd bring him into the show with yeah, us. It's just a Ronnie lookalike, but This is like unreal. <laughs> I actually don't. Yeah, that does not even look like you. Sorry yeah. to the listeners. Uh, definitely oh, get on YouTube. Yeah, and look you this. have this to get on there now because this, this is just... I'm not even going to describe this one. What a photo. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Ever. Back to the other yeah. one. <laughs> so I'm trying to follow uh, Muster up this hill and there's a clear chicken track around this, right? Yeah. Everyone else took the chicken track and I was like, you know what? I think I can do this. So I tried and it all went well until I went a little bit off line because I slid and then I'm nearly tipping the vehicle over. Now, yeah. the thing is that photo, during that photo, I'm sitting in the vehicle. He's telling me, just go forward from there. I'm not kidding. And I tried and I was tipping even more and I was like, nah, get the, get the fucking winch. Get it now. I was... Yeah, I was losing my calm there a little bit. So that was a winch out, that one. That was a winch out. Yeah, I was going to say, it wouldn't be in here if we weren't recovering you. So No, that was... <laughs> that's yeah. a serious angle. Like the, yeah. That's did, a ser- did the car turn off? No, no. Uh, but the oil light came on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. And that's, you know, all the oil's obviously not getting into the pickup. So yeah, yeah. that was a winch job we got out. Yep. Yeah. And right the, the photo on the screen now is uh, me and Torbs. That's after we got Torbs' vehicle through. We still got one more to go. That's that june one we were just talking about oh right so, yeah okay so now we're yep absolutely okay. spent oh so you've basically let lay you're laying sort of a bed of max tracks yeah across the whole track or built it on, up to the left the to edge. the passenger side a little bit more uh the, all on the passenger side to hold us in right now i'm glad this photo came out because it's not really time with the other one but it's just prompted me or something else so further beyond see where the land cruiser is in the background yep which is it's like a 50 meter section no 100 meter section actually yep there's all these um, uh, cut trees because obviously other people have been stuck and I had to cut the trees down so they can make it through. We had to put the max tracks over uh, crossways over all those stumps. Right. So we wouldn't slash our tires. Oh, okay. And, and we're able to drive over that as well. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, so. Just a side note, Little Bear. Little Bear? Yeah. Oh, Where does yeah. that come from on Torben's um, it's- 79? It's uh, something to do with some Nordic thing as well. So, oh, okay. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's like Son of Thor or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. So that that's why he's got Little Bear. Little on, Bear, okay. Yeah. Little Bear in his car. That's, that's pretty it. cool. Yeah. yeah. Were you saying, was it, I don't know if we said it on here or not, or you just told me, but Norway's highest point is only like... Was that you? Oh, no, Denmark's. Denmark's yeah. highest point is only... 400 metres. 400 metres. Yeah, yeah. 
that's that's the hill really yeah yeah so i've moved from from like a 400 meter hill to western australia that only has 1248 yeah <laughs> you're gonna love the high country <laughs> yeah <laughs> might be too high mate yeah, it'll, be, it'll feel like bloody everest <laughs> uh we, we've spoken about this one before oh, but mate. this is another i don't think we've yeah. actually seen that photo of um oh. torben stuck in the desert yeah it's it it says a lot doesn't it so what we're looking at is torben's land cruiser in a very sorry state it's on a 45 i'd say close yep. to he's chosen driver side down yeah, drive side down Unlike and that, you. that stuffed all the electrics in his foot well. So he's yep. standing next to it, uh, water above his knees, that's how the vehicle's stuck. So, you know, you can't see either driver side wheels. Yep. Halfway up the doors, yep. it's in mud, he's stuck and... A long way from anything to Long way from anything, from. yeah, exactly. But yep. we managed to get him out and, um, I mean, we've spoken about this one yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, we have. And go back and check this one out because we're not going to play the clip on this episode, but to you, that is yeah, some good pretty footage. Hectic. So, what we're looking at now is Harry from Fire to Fork. So, he's got bogged with his trailer, um, like a tr- uh, big trailer on the back of his Prado. So, in the shot, he's sitting in between the Prado and the trailer. Now, what he's holding there is not yeah, a... talk about that. What is, is that? Yeah, it's not a baby capsule, although it looks like one. Yeah. That is called a skid row. Um, it's something that Max Tracks also sell. The point of that is to put underneath your jockey wheel on your trailer. Yep. Uh, not just for recoveries, but if you are, um, say, parking up on a beach, that is so good. Okay. Because imagine trying to hook back up onto the trailer and you've had like people inside the trailer moving around and then slowly the jockey wheel sink down. Yep. Trying to hook that up, you've got to dig a massive hole and then get your car under it. Yeah, it's a, okay. It's a freaking nightmare. So that uh, stops that from happening. Yep. Also in recoveries, you can put that underneath it and that adds as a skid. So it's called skid row. Um, oh, okay, so so the way he's so the way it's facing now, so it's the that's going to face the Prado, the way right. the, the the front of and it, and it will be that that's how like the bottom the bottom it looks like the bottom to me facing up. Uh, no, that's flipped so, over. Yeah, so the bottom is facing down. Oh, okay. In that sleigh is where the jockey wheel is going to go, and yep. then you you can essentially just winch the the trailer. Yeah, forward. okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's probably nothing. <laughs> get on YouTube again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you it have looks no like idea a baby what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a baby capsule. Yeah. With, with a flat bottom, and inside the baby capsule, <laughs> that's where you put the jockey wheel. The baby. It's, it's like a sleigh. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. 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 I gotcha. If your trailer's gotcha. a baby. Yeah. Oh, very good. And there's. I reckon there might be now. I've oh, there's, seen this photo before, one. but there, yeah. there needs to be another photo come up to have a look at. Yeah, yeah, it's because we actually need to Harry. get Harry on, and when yes. we do get him on, we need to get his dog Fred on here, who <laughs> is just dropping one of the biggest turds on the beach here in front of <laughs> Harry doing the recovery. Who captured this photo? Oh, uh, so a guy called uh, Ryan uh, Formo. I think I think his last name is Formo. Right. Um, so yeah, Ryan. That's he's he's got like a van. He's got like a um, uh, LC three hundred or something. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> so oh, yeah, oh mate, studio, zoom mate. right in. <laughs> Four so, blokes just trying to do the shit. <laughs> what we're looking at here is um, I asked Harry to send me uh, one of his bogging photos. So he's, uh, he sends me this and he goes, yeah, Fred was really helpful. The old double meaning. I like it. When I opened it up, I looked at it and I was like. What's Fred doing? I'll zoom in a bit. And I was like, oh my God, Fred's yeah, taking, that's a, cool. taking a big dump. <laughs> uh, There's such a good shot. Oh, that's a ripper. Yeah, we de- we've got to get him on board, eh, Harry? We, we, yeah. uh, we've spoken about him so much on here. We might, and we'll probably get, we'll probably tee up with him on uh, at the Adelaide show. Oh, right. He's going to be there, is he? Yeah, yeah. If cool. not, we'll, we'll tee up with him. And, yeah, yeah, well, hopefully we're there and we can have a chat with him. That'd be, yeah. that'd be gold. And I wouldn't mind trying a couple of his dishes as well. Mate, they're, they're pretty incredible. Yeah. He actually got me on pickles. I used, to, I used to hate pickles. Oh, really? What did he put it in? What did he put it in to get you over the line? Right. So, we're in the Kimberley and he uh, he made these, uh, uh, his own KFC burgers, right? Ah. Uh-huh. And I hate KFC as well. But Me too. It's just, it's gross. <laughs> anyway, he made he made this deep fried chicken burger and he had, it looked amazing and he put these big sandwich stack and pickles on it and I grabbed it and I was like, you know what? He's just maybe this meal. I hate pickles. I'm just going to gnaw into this. Yeah. So then I gnaw into it and I'm like, oh my God, this tastes sensational. And then since then, like <laughs> pickles, pickles, every man. trip, there's a jar of pickles and a jar of jalapenos <laughs> everywhere I go. That's a new nickname, pickles. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> pickles. Uh, I, um, have you got, we, we digress a little bit there, but uh, have you got, what's, what's the, 
I'm going to say the worst, but also probably the best. So the worst sort of stuck that you've seen or been involved in and then the one that's been successful for you to actually get out. Similar to a Torben one there. Would okay. that be the worst that you've probably no, 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 that wasn't the worst one because I knew we'd get him out. Okay, I didn't know what that's state confidence because I looked at that and thought there is yeah this could be a this could be a Simpson Desert local now this thing yeah see the thing is for me when when I see someone in dire need or or like someone has just hit rock bottom and they you know that's when I just go all right I'm gonna have to be positive here yep just you know this is this is a shit situation. But let's just be positive. So I just okay. have to reassure him. Yep. We're getting you out. And, you know, and the, the thing is like when you keep saying that you're going to get him out, you're going to get him out, you start believing that yeah. yourself. Yep. And it, and it just happens, right? Yep. Um, I had a plan and shared a plan with the group. They they gave really good input as well. So you always get input from everyone else. It's probably good to talk about this because everyone can give you input. Whoever is in the situation of course, get the input as well. But if they're in a real shit place, you know, if they're like not in a really good mental place because of what's happening to them, um, you really just got to reassure them. But in a way, leave them out of that conversation of how you're going to recover it. And then once you know you have a solid plan, then take the plan yep. to that person and then tell them. Because if you're still speculating and people might go, oh, I'm not sure if that's going to work. It's going to play on, on the other person's negativity. Yep. And that can then enter the group discussion of this recovery so you really just got to be over the top positive and that's what we were yep, and I like it. we 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 got him out and i knew we would it was just how much work and effort is going to take is it going to take one day is it going to take a day and a half is it yeah, going to take okay. two days yep we will get him out yeah so so where so where does it sit then is it if there's worse than that what is it so i'll say uh, probably the worst one will be at a place called pain's fine uh up near pain's fine uh Ningan station actually yep we the first time i ever went there now my experience was quite limited back then i did have a winch uh my mate had his rodeo i had a n70 hilux the petrol like the older hilux oh yeah and my other mate had uh the, the older hilux and that the more square looking one yep um so we all went we, we all went up to ningan station for the weekend four days i think it was we had a few other people with us as well who were not four-wheel drivers and this is where like negativity happened when we got stuck right probably me <laughs> but i'm talking like people that have never been full driving yeah okay ever yep. right so we're out there and um <clears throat> the owner wasn't there but his son was and he's like oh yeah you should definitely go to salt lake and check out this island it's really cool like you just got to drive across here and then you'll get there right so okay cool um that wasn't on our plan but we'll see if we get time yep the last day the hottest day 38 degrees we're like you know what let's go check out this salt lake i would have dried out a bit because Is that we, what you're thinking? 38 degrees, dried out. Oh well, it was. It, or it you didn't hot, even know. Yeah, been hot and dry for yeah, ages. You right. know. Right. So we headed down there, and we're like, oh, we've got three hours before we got to, you know, or maybe less than that, whatever it was. Yep. Let's go check it out. But what I said was because I, I, I did have a slight bit of knowledge that hey, this salt lake, maybe we sink, maybe we don't. It looked really dry. It was hot. I thought it'd be alright, but just in case, I said, guys wait and see how I go and then follow me. Yep. So I drove and then I got over one island to the next island and then to the biggest island before it was nothing for ages. Yep. I came off that misgeared completely, sunk the car six meters off the island. I'm so glad I misgeared because I could have ended up a lot yeah, further, further out. out. Yeah. And then I'm on the radio, I'm like, don't go, don't go, don't go. And then I'm looking in the mirror as I'm saying it and there's my mate and his <laughs> rodeo behind me, sinks his ass in. He's got his wheels up on the island. I'm six meters on the other side of the island. And then behind him is my other mate who's just gone full steering lock. And as soon as he did full steering lock, he just sank. Doug, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so there's three cars stuck. It's 38 degrees. Um, the passenger in my vehicle gets out and he's just going off at me. He's going off at everyone. He's like, oh, this is, this is bullshit. This is fucked. We're, you know, how are we going to get out of here? It's hot. And he was panicking. And that was kind of spreading in, the negativity was yeah, spreading right. in. And and that's when, you know, that's my first lesson of just reassure everyone. And the thing was, we got two winches. Rodeo behind me has a winch, I have a winch. My winch ain't going to do nothing because yep. I'm facing out there. So we used a Rodeo winch and it was like a tug of war. Whoever was least stuck would move back a tiny bit. Yep. And I didn't have the knowledge of the double line pull. 
So we use ah, a yeah. straight pull. So yep. the winches are working hard, yep. right? So eventually we get back and I get back enough. He gets up and his winch is dead. Like after, because we tried to use it on my other mate, the winch is dead. So then we got my winch out and my winch pretty much died like days after this because it was just cooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Because another pull like that and everyone had suction. It was so bad. It was so hot. It took about three hours in that heat. Yeah, right. And then we finally got back to the station and then we told him what had happened. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, he's the same guy I told us to go there. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, I was out on my motorbike the other day and the, the tire just kept getting fatter and fatter and I just kept going faster and faster. And I'm like, mate, that information <laughs> would have been bloody good ago. to know yeah. two days ago. Uh, anyway, we got out and we got back and uh, it was, you know, we had, we, had a, we had an experience. Yeah, definitely. You well, I, I'm picking up a couple of things. Well, I'm, mate, more one thing. Oh, two things I've picked up here. You've put your car into some pretty sticky we put yourself and you know your cars and cars in your convoy they've been in some sticky situations yeah but nothing's it, it, it's never not been recovered is it's, that, is that what you're telling me no it's never not been recovered like there hasn't been so a you, situation where we had to leave a car behind and or right. you know the one that's caught on fire so, or something so like that. so for me that's reassuring because of all the places that you've been you've <laughs> never actually had to leave something behind no. and the second point is be positive be always be positive yeah negativity is just gonna it's just going to make it harder. It's just going to bog down the person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want, if you want it to be harder, be negative about it. I, uh, I really like that. So be positive. Yeah, be positive is number one. And Don't panic. Take if, you, take your time. If Ronnie hasn't lost a car, then you probably won't. That's what I'm going to take from. <laughs> is there this. any wood I can touch or any? <laughs> that could be good for it. Could be good for the show though, mate. If that happens, but anyway, we won't do that. This is the four wheel drive podcast driven by Shelter. We've got the um. We've actually got the the audio back because we didn't we didn't take headphones to Sydney, so we did around the fire pit without no. any crackle. A, oh, we did have a what fire cackle? close to us. We uh, did, yeah. Luke from Wildfire. Yes, check yeah. that out too. That was um, oh, man, how I good did that smell on the? Did you did you get a taste? I didn't I get a taste. We were actually on stage when they when they did their oh, yeah, when they yeah. did their stuff, so we yeah. missed out. But um, he stirred us up because we went and grabbed food from the vendors, like the food trucks and. He came over, he's like, oh, my food not good enough. And I was like, oh, I'm spewing, mate. I would love to have tried it. But he's a cool dude. Uh, he is a cool dude. That's the reason we were hungry. Yeah, I know. That's we sat there for like four hours. This fire's stoking up. Fire and this and thing's just dripping away. I don't even know what he was cooking. cooking but, whatever oh, it was. It was unreal. Oh, anyway. It smelled incredible. It did, it did smell great. And like when, you, when you're there and you just can't move and you're smelling the food. Yeah, it's, I have to bring him on for a chat too and a, yeah. you know, maybe a feed. Well, we can't complain too much. We're not celebrity status like Ronnie. No, nah, we, we could come move, off it. But Ronnie literally couldn't move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually had a chance to eat. But, yeah, we did. Um, I'll, I'll, thanks for the burgers, boys. They were good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, oh. there's a few photos of me with food in my mouth, like do, doing this. Yeah, you just yeah. had to soldier through, didn't you? You actually said <laughs> that. You've got so much time for your fans. Yeah, you did a good which, job. Like, not a lot of people have that that much yeah. time for their fans, but you actually genuinely. Without, spend a lot of time with all of them without like without just, pissing yeah. in your pocket Jade and I yeah. were impressed by that, that it was, was like full on it was good yeah um, well, I mean you, you gotta give them the time you know yeah, I mean yeah they yeah. Yeah. they're all the best thing was, like, they were all very appreciative for you putting out your content because obviously YouTube is free for everyone to watch yeah, so yeah. what you put out is is free for everyone to look at I mean, including us so, educational you know yeah and people yeah. really actually that like that sort of rang home with me because people genuinely appreciated the videos that you're putting out and um a lot of support yeah. behind you. And that, that's the feedback that I, 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 I love to get as well. Like yep. Just seeing people, you know, like, oh, I had no idea what I was doing and now I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It's, yep. just, it's as rewarding as the tag along as I used to do. Because yep. that, that was cool. You know, you take people out to an incredible place and then they've never been off road before, like proper. Yeah. And then next minute or next week later or a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later, you get an email saying, yeah, thanks for that trip. I've, since then, I've done X, Y, Z. And it's like, wow, cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. But I've also spent this much and that and this and this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, let's get into this around the fire pit for those that have uh, joined us for the first time or, or recently. Yeah. This is where we drop the laptop and it's message from messages from uh, the listeners and the viewers. And Jaden reads the questions oh, out. didn't even see your laptop disappear. Yeah, I just threw that down real Vanished. quick yeah, on, a, on a box either. of shelters. Yeah, so um, we're flying we're blind. recording because I'm going to have to watch that back later and see how quickly you did it. Uh, just, it was composed. It wasn't real quick. It was just <laughs> smooth. Didn't punch the microphone this time. <laughs> are these, these cartons of shelters here 
weighing down the table so this mic doesn't fall down is that what's going on here that's what's going on there yeah so the but more the more we have the the more shaky yeah. things get yeah the more on the piss the mic gets <laughs> <laughs> the more on the piss the mic. i love that one yeah i mean shelters are good for everything boys. they are they have multi-purpose yeah um all right so our first question in from in from michael jackson oh which we love is he wearing yeah. one glove i've i've just got text so. okay that's actually good. Michael, if you could get to us, mate, are you wearing one glove? He <laughs> uh, must be sick of all this. <laughs> that sort of chat. <laughs> yeah. I'm, anyway, question for Ronnie. You said on the podcast not to buy a first generation vehicle. I've ordered a new Prado. Expected delivery oh. is late 2024. They're saying it won't be called a Prado and will be a hybrid diesel or petrol. Do you think I should continue? And would you recommend petrol or diesel? Great Thanks, question. Thanks, boys. Great podcast. Perfect content. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Well, I'd love to hear. That's a great question, oh, though. And the, the new generation stuff, I love. Yeah. I love thinking Ronnie's brain on this. Look, um, I wouldn't say don't do it. I'll just say I recommend waiting for the second one. But, you know, waiting for the second, it, it's a very hard thing to do. It's, it's very, if it's something that really excites you, it's very hard to wait for the next one. Just be aware that you may be a guinea pig because you are going to take it off road so you may find faults in the system like i bought the first n80 hilux the updated engine version and that had flaws which which i discovered and i recently took out the new rogue and that that fixed the flaws so the first generation will always have some issues some little tweaks that need to need to happen so just be aware of that otherwise Go for it. I mean, if the vehicle excites you, go for it. Diesel versus petrol. If it's hybrid, I would probably go petrol because then you got hybrid, you know. But what does also excite me is a diesel hybrid. If there's a diesel hybrid, I just didn't think they'd ever do it. So if there is a diesel hybrid coming, wow, that excites me. But I have my doubts there will be. So petrol hybrid, I think, is a good choice because you have the um, petrol engine to keep you going once the electricity runs out. Yeah, but it's going to take a long time to charge electricity when you're out in the middle of nowhere. That's the only thing. That well, that that's the new shape Prado, is it? Yeah, yeah. It looks it looks can't amazing. Wait, too, can't wait to see him on the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be awesome. So he says they're not calling it a Prado. Are yeah. They, what are they calling it? Well, in America, they're calling it Land Cruiser something, but I thought they would call it a Prado here. I don't actually know. It, interesting to find out what they actually do. Hmm. I have heard rumors about that's. The diesel version may have the 48 volt battery with it, but um, from what I read and what I've researched, I don't think it's going to going to be like a like like that the kind of typical hybrid we think of. Okay. Like, I think it's like a booster engine, almost like what they have in the Formula One, where um, they have the extra power from the from the battery when they're racing around, because then they got to charge the battery up again. So I think it might just oh, be right. extra power maybe to take off or something and then that battery needs to be charged up. So I think it's like a, an assistant technology rather than oh, we're right going to run on this, we're going to run on that. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, That's what I think cool. from what I've from what I've read and heard. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you, you get like a petrol hybrid, you got the, you know, you got that and then you got the petrol. So as you're braking, it charges the battery, but yeah, it just depends how they're going to work it. Yeah. It's a similar principle, but it's just more on the just assistant for power and torque, I think. Mean. Okay. Yeah. So what are we saying? Go for it. Michael, go for it. Mate, someone's got to be the guinea pig, so Michael, go for it. Yep. I like cool. it. Go for it, Michael. Uh, this one in from Brayden. Hey, boys, need some advice. What's your ideal camp setup for a tray? Using it for work as well, so he can't have a canopy, but wants to take it camping. You boys have both got utes. What do you reckon? Yeah. Take it away with the well body side because you, you, you've, you've got the well body. Yeah. Because you would have gone camping before you had the canopy or did you have the canopy? Um, I got I put a canopy on pretty quickly. Yep. yep. So I didn't do a lot. Um, but you would have done some. Yeah, I started. Before. Yeah, I did start without it. Yeah, like yeah. just li- like little really basic stuff like, um, yep. yeah. But I can't even, it's hard to remember back to it to be honest. I've been with the canopy for so long. But I don't know, there's... I even at being at the show, being at the four-wheel drive show in Sydney, seeing the amount of options there are now to, um, like the, the front runner boxes, for example. I know mm. we speak about front runner a bit on here, but um, I've used them, not connected to them, but I've just, I've used them and I'm loving them. And you can put them, 
in the back they're dust proof and yeah and like they they serve a really great purpose they're compact you, i'm sure you can probably slide it in between the, if you've got toolboxes on the back or whatever it is but um it's a really good option because you could use them work and play i mean yes say if you had 10 boxes right i know it's a lot of yep. boxes but well they're only like 50, five 50 bucks a box though. five work yeah yeah work play work play. and then you, and they're compatible to the roof rack if you go a front runner roof rack say which i'm sure there's options out there that, yeah that you can just front clamp runner. them down clamp them down up yeah. there and they're out of the way as well yeah. so and you could clamp you could i mean fix those to the tray as well yeah i, yeah, I, yeah. I guess if you yeah. wanted to yeah well i've done that even i've got the canopy obviously on but i've just um there's tracks obviously because i've got the front runner the setup with so i can pull out the boxes on a slide um, uh, so it's like a draw setup but okay. it's actually the boxes underneath so but i've got tracks on the front runner setup yeah on top and you can you can screw your um your eyelets into that and i've just i've just drilled into it as well and just put my own in so if i want to set it up in a different place it's not in in line with the track um i just throw throw them in there and i can tie them down so they're not moving around yeah. and well, probably it's actually more multi-purpose really because yeah with a canopy you then restrict yourself a little bit more but you i mean there's definitely a lot of pros to a canopy yeah but without you got more freedom of what you can carry 100 percent. i'd love to go back to yeah. just try just a tray yeah. or but I, for me it's it's very practical for what i do mm. day to day but the i just i love the look of it as well but there's also yeah. like there's restrictions for me now with height um all of that especially when you put the drawers in i don't actually have a lot like a lot of room in there like i get a fridge in no worries with probably you know there might be just under a foot sort of thing to, to open the, the lid to the ceiling that. so i can yeah i can open the lid a little well, it's probably about a foot so i can open the lid a little bit but i have to pull it out to get it open fully um tray you just don't yeah when it's you know I, I don't yeah. know i've lost track of the question a bit but well for with, me the boxes yeah. would be great yeah i mean look with with a well body you i think you have the advantage as well of you don't have to tie everything down yeah you know yeah <laughs> Um, you know, like you probably should tie it down, but yep. you can get away with a bit more. You can't really see in there either, but you know, things can slide around a bit. On a tray back, you kind of need to tie everything down because yep. it's easier for stuff to fall Flip out. out. Yeah. Um, but with with a tray, I love it. Swags in there, and those yep. boxes you're talking about, the wolf packs, yep. they're dust proof, so you can keep all everything dust proof. But another thing a lot of people love doing, and I used to do, is those big storage cases, right? Yep. You can even get the cheap ones from yeah. um, Super Cheap Auto and all that. Uh, they do let a bit of dust in once you, you tie them down, you ratchet strap them down or whatever, because then you're bowing so the lids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those I'll recommend bolting through the bottom, and then you've got your storage case, work and play again. But I do prefer the, the you know like those wolf packs because yep. they're easier to handle. And with the higher lid, you can actually put a lot of stuff in them yep so a mix of that and the swags that's what i do and then you've got all your dirty gear like if you're doing a recovery you got some dirty gear chuck it in the back yep um around camp you're the wood hero you're you're the yeah, guy you're that's going to drive out to the trees yep. and everyone's going to load it up yeah yeah yep. you know for the camp setup as well if you can't if you like say you're not running a roof rack i don't know if you are or not but if you're not and you can't put an awning on gazebos from yeah, anaconda gazebo. are quite cheap you can and they're yep. They pack up really compact and they normally just fit in the back of the tray. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely. Well body and definitely. away you go and then you've got your swag. and Yeah, for sure. Set. But I reckon the boxes are probably the biggest one. Boxes, gazebo, yep. I love it. Um, so you don't, need, you don't actually need a roof rack then. Yeah. But if you do have a roof rack, it doesn't mean you can't bring gazebo still because you can have yeah. an awning and then join it to the gazebo, yep. which I used to do and it gives you a lot of room. Yeah, so many options. But yeah. yeah. And like swag, tray, swag, boxes, keep all your gear dry. Yep. Uh, label, label your boxes don't overfill the boxes either because if you overfill the boxes it's going to be a bit painful to get yeah. stuff in and out you're yep. better off having an extra box and your gear spread out yep it's much easier i'd set those up i keep saying yep 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 so sorry about that on the <laughs> just agreeing <laughs> with everything but uh, i'll yep. pull myself up on that <laughs> it's making um, some good points yeah really really good points oh, uh, <laughs> yeah i the organize the what's inside the box though as well because mm. they there's dividers and stuff you can get yes. from anywhere. Yep. I think front runner do do the dividers, but you can you could do it however you wanted to do it. But you can even put a bag inside it. Like I've done that before yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll put some crash pad bags in there. Front runner do bags yep. as well. Suit the boxes. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. The more you can organise it in the box without putting too much in, the better it is. Makes the more it, yeah. stuff you got to move, the more annoying it's going to be. Especially if you're using it for work too. Yeah. What you want is if it's raining. If it's dusty, 
where you are. If you want to get something out of the box, you don't want to have to put all this other crap on the floor. You want to, you want to just get something out, put the lid back on. Yep. Keeps it nice and dry. Oh, one thing we probably forgot to touch on. I know this has gone on a bit with this tray thing. The table. The table is one of the most important things when it comes to camping. One of the most... Actually, that reminded me because I need to go and get gotten a new one of those actually. Yeah. Mine's so fall apart, falling apart. <laughs> Look, I do have a table under my roof rack, which is that stainless steel table. Yep. You know, I'm talking oh. about front run again here. I said yep. Um, but I mean, that's one way. Then you can also get the trestle tables. If you get a trestle table, have it in a spot where you can put it in last and get it out first. That's right. I remember that lesson that you taught on one of your videos. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, you get the table out to put stuff on it. When you pack up, you want to put stuff on the table as you're packing up, where there's still stuff on the table. And people around you are going to put stuff on your bloody table. It happens all the time. And you probably notice that if one of your mates has a table, something's going to end up on that table. Yeah. Whether it's a couple of shelters or something, a stubby holder, something's going to end up on their table. Yes. So therefore, the table needs to be the last thing that gets packed away. Accessible. Great call. Yeah. I need to go and get one. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> uh, we got one more from Nicholas D'Angelo. G'day. Where do you guys find all your maps with things like tracks, campsites, landmarks, etc.? Have we have we done this? I don't think uh, we've done it in this specific way. I think the question is asked in a different way. Where do we get our maps from? Right? Mm. Is that is that the question? Where we get them from? Yeah, I feel like we've. I feel like we might have covered it as camp. well, but maybe we did do it What's on the, the different... camp one, the camp website where you get all the uh, free. Oh, the oh the wiki camps. Is yeah. that what he's asking? No, but I mean, like, I feel like we've. Oh yeah, we wiki spoke camps, about wiki camps a lot. Wiki camps. We? You've got Hema, Ronnie, don't you? Downloaded. Well, onto yeah, like I've, a tablet. I've, I've got the Garmin, which is on, and it has the Hema maps on it. Yeah, the the Overlander one. Um, actually, had a glitch for the first time the other day. Um, I'll take it, mate, if you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> mate, there's Weezy. so many tracks on it. <laughs> How's, how about all the stuff that Ronnie gets yeah. to give away at the four drive show? And we're mate, just sitting there like, unreal. mate, we, we would yeah. love some of this. <laughs> mate, it's, it's <laughs> no, hectic. Right. I'm right. just giving it away and I'm like, if you're oh. If you're around for Adelaide and Perth and you want to you wanna win some free stuff, yeah. come down. Come and see Ronnie. Come down. Come to one of the live shows that we'll be doing. Dometic you're going fridges, to win something. We ice boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Dometic Look, fridges, thank GME you very much. GME family packs. <laughs> GME family packs. These stuff, yes. This stuff is valued at like... Ronnie gave away like max six tracks. of his Max tracks. Yeah. Off his own car, he just took them Did off. Did you know... Oh, he no, there was two off my own car. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he said yeah, yeah. He, was give, he was taking Max tracks off his roof to give away, but there was always the top up on top of the roof. So yeah. <laughs> as he was handing it out, Max tracks were just coming around yeah, and topping him up. putting them back on. It's incredible. No, there was a lot of giveaways. Oh, so yeah. yeah, if you're around for Adelaide and Perth, get down. And he might be giving away that garment. He might give away his <laughs> trippy, <laughs> mate. No, no, no. I'm not... No, no, no. We'll wear him down. He might give away the troopy. What was the, uh, the question? The Maybe if Garmin match. came on board and gave us something, we can oh, give hey, some away. There we go. Yeah. Garmin, anyone from Garmin <laughs> listening will give away some of your products. I need to watch too. Yeah, Garmin, I'm the only influencer <laughs> in the whole industry that's paid for them. <laughs> I, I hear you guys give them out like lollipops, <laughs> oh, apparently. I don't, don't get them now. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, well, that's how yeah. you get I just Anyway. I just, you know what? Quickly, I just use my phone and, and oh, I've yeah. got all the books. I love the HEMA books. Actually, yeah. Yeah. The ma- yeah, the yeah. maps books. Uh, like if you want any map possible just go to it's like the map the map shop I think it's called the map shop in Perth yeah I don't yeah I've never heard of that, that, that makes sense is that a store it, it's a store yeah I think it's like a, a fam, I think it's a family run store so happy to yeah, give right. them a plug here by the way yeah, all, right. all the people we've, we've mentioned yeah I mean we have stuff to give away but we don't we haven't got a permanent sponsor like a, from the full drive industry oh, yeah. yet so <laughs> you know if you guys are getting confused that we're sponsored by all these people we are not so get on board guys yeah yeah <laughs> that's a call out <laughs> it's a nice, yeah. little, nice little plug I like it no we were just very lucky to be able to give away yeah, oh, nah, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was cool. That was really I've good. never really given yeah. away yeah. stuff, but that was cool. I mean, Shout out yeah. to Dometic. That For was, sure. That was really, really For cool. Sure. They I mean, gave away some cool stuff. That gave away fridge, people, people were basketball. very happy yeah. with that. Who, the, the guy that won, he gave us a message um, later on. Oh, oh cool. Could, and shout out to him because very lovely bloke. Happy to stand there and take a photo with us yeah, holding yeah, this yeah, massive yeah. fridge. Yeah. Front runner as well. Yeah, yeah, front runner as well. We yeah, front runner as well. And Max Trucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now we've well got to name them all. And my yeah. own Max Trucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it'd be, be, be great to have someone on as permanent though, you know? Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah. 
Anyway, I'm I'm all ears. Anyway, get yeah. down to the Adelaide and Perth shows. That's for it. The, for today's show. That's it. Look at um, us just yeah, having just a conversation. Oh, sorry, boys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, just get any questions. Everyone listening that's, to this, um, <laughs> carry on. That's all just it understand, is. we're not desperate. We love doing this. Yeah, this is all. Yep. So you know, yeah, no, that was all a bit tongue in cheek, wasn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. For yeah. people that don't, yeah, that are listening and can't see our faces, just so they know. Yeah, just so they know, because like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in the industry. And unfortunately, that makes other people look like they're sponsored by left, right, and center. You know, yes, I, you know, I'm definitely sponsored by, by you know, a couple of companies, but it's not as it looks. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you who we are sponsored by, though, and that's Shelter. Shelter. And Shelter we thank them very much. Uh, and that's get down who's to making this possible. Yes, they are. They're even holding our mics up right now. So, on that, we'll leave it there. Well, actually, one oh, more. Th- you know what's like. going on in Shelter on Friday when this episode will be released? Yep. Dice. Dice. Dice is playing at Shelter. Oh, the band. The band oh. Dice is playing at Shelter. Down in Busselton. Down in Busso. Where are we? I'll be there. You going, are you? I'm going. Oh, you going? Yeah, a little day trip What's your down choice? To What's your um, Shelter beer choice at the moment? At the moment, Backchat Ale. Oh, I know okay. that's a bit. Uh, yeah. Backchat Ale. It's unreal. Yeah, yeah it is cool. It's, yeah, it's it is so unreal. Good. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, because normally when you like, you want to get something made with your name on it and stuff, Mm. Uh, it's normally not as good as their, but yeah. You know, but I reckon that's the best beer. Oh, it's yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, I'm a, I'm they've a got some new stuff coming too. out as well, which oh, is right like I've had a go, I've had a go at um what? some of their stuff at um. Yep. What's that one there? What was it? The there? extra pale ale. The, the yellow one. Yep. Extra pale ale. Oh, that that one. Which okay. Extra pale ale. So Indian lager, Indian pale ale lager. Which in the middle one's there. the light one? The point uh, five percent. Yeah, yeah, the point five percent. Big fan of that one. Hey. Oh mate, oh I love that one because I mean. You know, if you're the driver and stuff, yeah, you, you can have a few. If you or if, you know, you got something on the next day, you can still, you know, and it's a nice beer. Mm. Like, it's probably the best light beer that I've tasted. Yep. Anyway, sorry right. boys. Dice September twenty second down at Shelter Brewing Co. Look at this. You'll you'll hear us. You'll hear it on Friday. So get your tickets and get down there because yeah. that is going to be unreal. All right, let's wrap it up. There's enough yeah. carrying on. The Four Wheel Drive Podcast, driven by Shelter. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks, Jaden. Thanks, Liam. Um, Southern River Band will see us out. Uh, the Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram. Hit us up over there, and uh, I highly recommend you go over to Backchat Studios and check this one out on YouTube. So, we'll catch you later. Yippee ki yay.